All right, guys, welcome back to the final episode of my VCT lock-in recap series. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about Cloud9. This is going to be less of a recap of their tournament run and more to do with the moves they made afterwards. But if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. Uh, and yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. So yeah, at lock-in... Um, Cloud9 started their tournament run against Paper Rex, a team that they were probably underdogs against uh, going into the tournament. Very slight, like slightly below, like maybe 52, 48 or something like that, because people were really low on them because of their Red Bull home ground performance or whatever, even though that was a kind of one-time, like one-off Mickey Mouse tournament, if you want to call it that. And they... Kind of destroyed Paper X. Um, the Lotus, like Lotus, was really, really scrappy. There were a lot of like clutches and egos and hero plays, all that kind of stuff. Uh, general, genuinely one of the more entertaining maps of the tournament, even though it was thirteen eight. And then Pearl was kind of a stomp. There were some cool clutches, like I know the this the Zeppa one where he, I think it was like a one v three, maybe one v four, because of the res. And that one got clipped everywhere. But they started off really hot. Uh, Ye showed some flexibility. Even they brought the Chamber back out in this game. Both teams did. And yeah, I think C9 started off their tournament pretty well. Uh, obviously, not the best, but pretty good. And then against DRX on Pearl... They, again, stomped the team that they played against. But then, when it came to Haven, they kind of got rolled. I pretty much expected this. I mean, DRX is the best team in the world on Haven, in my opinion, and has been for the past calendar year. Uh, and I don't think it's particularly close. I think the next next close is probably Fnatic. And I don't think they're the best on that map. Like, they got pushed by Furia. Uh, yeah, Cloud9 kind of got rolled. I don't think the scoreline really shows how bad this game was. Uh, they won an eco round four. I think, oh no, that, that was a force, I think, because they were forcing a lot after getting Bomb Plant. And then Icebox was just an even bigger role. Uh, DRX brought out the, the Viper Harbor stuff for the first time in this map, which looked really cool. And the only player who really showed up was Ye. We'll talk about a little bit later. Zelsus was completely feeding this map. Uh, I like Zelsus. He's a good player, but holy shit, that was one of the worst individual performances on a map I've seen in a long time. Um, and I don't think he played particularly well on the uh, Phoenix on Haven, but I don't think that was really his fault because I don't know how much you're supposed to do with the Phoenix on Haven. So overall, I think they... This team has poten had potential, I'll say, because they are making changes. Uh, I think they kind of underutilized TA, kind of forcing him to play Chamber and Sage still, when you could have just put him on Jet. He would have played well on Jet. I think they just kind of overthought it with the other roles on this team. Like, you could have put Zelsus into more of a supportive role rather than just playing him in the Duelist. You could have put... Zeppa into an even more supportive role than he was playing, like the Fade Sova stuff, that kind of role, even Breach. I mean, I know Zelsus is playing the Breach pretty well at home ground, so I'm surprised I'm surprised they didn't do that. Uh, Leaf, I mean, for everything said about this team, he looked really, really good on the Sentinel. Um, I mean, people were complaining about this team's roles a lot, but, I mean, he, they played two people on Killjoy, I think, and people were complaining about that, like, or Leaf played it there, and then Vanity played it on Icebox, which was kind of odd, because I would have expected him to play Viper and then Leaf to play Killjoy, but I don't know. It's not that, that big of a deal, I think. This team would have been one of the favorites going into the Americas League, 
if not for their roster changes, which we're going to get into now. All right. And on to their mentioned roster changes. I'm going to start with the first one that they made, which is the cut, removal, whatever you want to say, of Yay, which in this video that they put out said that it was because of role changes, or not role, role issues, and that they just couldn't find a way to make it work, which, as I said uh, when I was talking about their run, I don't, I didn't really see it, like, I think they could have done the roles differently and figured it out, and it would have been fine. Um, the overwhelming majority of people said that, are saying that it's because of finance issues, which I think is true. Um, I just think if you have the best player of 2022 and you have role issues, you figure it out. Um, I, I, there's just no way uh, you cut other people in that, in that scenario. Um, but it just kind of sucks because yeah, he's probably not going to find a team now for the split in a couple weeks. I think it starts in April. I don't, I don't know if that's true. I'd have to check that. But we're not going to see Yay for the rest of the year, I don't think. Uh, and this might be a an interesting take, but I think Cloud9 is probably going to be the first org that ends up getting kicked out of franchising by Riot since they can do that. And then onto their second roster change, which made me upset. Uh, is where they cut Vanity. Which, in George Ged's report, he said, I think it was that despite his teammates wanting to play, he was either removed or left. And with Vanity, I think it's more likely that he left and just didn't want to be there anymore because of the fact that they cut Ye off that contract. And I just, this team is going in the wrong direction, obviously, after you lose top three, maybe four IGL and NA. I think I'd put Stellar and maybe Valen over him. And then on top of that, you're losing Ye who I think is a little bit overrated. Like I put a list together here. Uh, I would have Durka ranked over him. I'd have Ospos, CNED, Buzz, Artis, and then maybe Forsaken. Uh, I think definitely the first five. Uh, they've shown significantly more flexibility than Ye, um, especially in this meta where you're going to have to play more than just Jet. Chamber and Sage. Um, I don't know. I just. I think this, like, depending on who they get, um, if they get somebody like Will off the free agent market who got cut by Mad Lions recently, I think that's a potential. I don't want to say upgrade, but like moving in the right direction after these moves. But I think it's rumored that they're going to get some. Former Sonics members, I think it was. And I know MCE is probably top two scout in Valorant behind Mini. I, I just don't believe in this team. Uh, I'm going to start doing my rankings for each league. And I'm going to tell you now, Cloud9 is probably going to be down towards the bottom, but I think some people are kind of underrating uh, the players that they're going to get. I think MCE will do a good job with this roster and at least make them a contender to win a few games, like maybe similar expectations to what EG was before they signed BCJ, and I think it was just BCJ. Um, but yeah, that's going to be the video. Oh yeah, this I I think I said this move made me sad. I forgot to mention that. Uh Vanity is my favorite player. Uh everybody talks about how he has an ego and shit talks. But he shit talks because it's fun. 
and he actually likes the people he's playing against, so he doesn't do it because he hates them or because he has an ego. He just thinks it's fun. And But yeah, that's going to be the end of the video. Uh, leave a comment on what you guys thought of Cloud9's run at lock-in in in their roster changes. And yeah, uh, I'll see you in the next one. Probably, it'll probably be rankings of, I'll probably do the Pacific League first because that's the first one that's starting. Uh, but yeah, peace.